Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, now we have the third episode of Fear the Walking Dead. Um, we had to wait a grueling two weeks for it to come out, but it finally did. Pretty much started out where it left off. The group was still in the barbershop, and obviously the, the riot was happening outside. The walls started to, to get hot, you know? That means, uh, obviously, something's on fire, so they had to escape. Uh, they bum-rushed their way out uh, as people were trying to come into the barbershop. And they hit the streets. The young teenage boy actually notices one of the infected, like, chomping on somebody else. Right in the middle of the street. Nobody else is noticing, though. Why? Because they're all too involved in their own crap. And there you go right there. Infection starts spreading. So quickly. Um, and nobody else is paying attention. Because all they're caring about is destroying things. You know, they escape. They're trying to get away. The whole purpose was for the uh, family inside the barbershop and the other family uh, to basically go their own ways. The barbershop owner's wife um, actually gets hurt in a scaffolding accident. The scaffolding falls down on top of her leg and she gets severely injured. So this is the moment that, you know, this is the moment that causes both of those families to come together um, and then they have a reason to stay together now. Because now, you know, they have to help the barbershop owner's wife uh, with her injury. So they have to take her somewhere safe. And they try to head to a hospital. Uh, obviously, the hospital is a place where you're supposed to go to get help. In this case, if you think about it, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of sick people there. A lot of dead people there. Uh, they started to reanimate. They were coming out of the, the hospital. Uh, the cops and, and all that were taking them down one by one uh, surrounding the hospital so they couldn't stay there they had to head back to, you know, their house. Honestly, one of the scariest and, and actually kind of creepiest moments of the episode was when they're driving in the truck, the family, well, the two families, you know, the barbershop owner and, and the other uh, other crew, um, they're driving away, and then you see the power grid from the city just one by one. It all turns off, um, and that's pretty crazy. Seeing something like that, I can only imagine, like, somebody's reaction would be like, you know, what's going on the world is coming to a halt and while all that is going on uh travis's girlfriend madison is back at home with her son that's going through withdrawals and a daughter uh, they're trying to kill time you know just playing board games and stuff but you know it's kind of hard for her not to worry about her her boyfriend and what's going on out there and if he's even going to come home you know so that's a that's another thing in itself of course you have a moment where they start hearing uh, scraping, you know, on the outside of the house, and they're wondering what the hell's going on. Uh, they slowly, carefully try to go find out what it is. They find out it's a dog. You know, they let the dog in. For one, first thing, I wouldn't have let no dog in. Fuck that. At this point, you know, since they don't know anything, who's to say animals can't get infected too, you know? I, I would be more careful that way. I wouldn't let no dog in. So they let the dog in, and then I believe the daughter, Alicia, uh, looks outside and she sees the neighbor which now he's undead you know he's one of the, the infected i'll just call him infected from now on uh, sees that he's one of the infected uh, so the the son nick the drug son the druggy son uh decides hey you know uh i know you know our other neighbor has a shotgun i tried to steal it once let's go get it so they head over there to go try to find a gun while they're doing that the dog starts to bark uh they notice they look out the window and they see the neighbor that's, you know, one of the infected now walk into their, through the backyard into their house. Um, and you start hearing the dog barking like crazy. Uh, and then you hear like the dog squealing and howling, yelping, and then you don't hear anything. So they hurry up and they get back over there. Um, at the same time, while they're heading out, they notice that Travis is pulling into the driveway. He has no idea who's inside. Uh, you know, so they're trying to hurry up and get back. Um, they do that. And, you know, Travis sees his neighbor eating the dog. Eating the dog. That, that was pretty surprising. Um, you don't see that very often. I don't think... Uh, well, okay. In The Walking Dead, I think they they ate a horse. Twice. <laughs> I believe. I think uh, that was as far as animals go. I think that's far as, as far as they went. Um, but, you know, that was one of those moments where... Now it's Travis's turn to, you know, see this firsthand, experience one of these infected people firsthand, like right up up front in his face. Um, and he does that. And 
he thinks it's still his neighbor. So he's trying to communicate with him. He's not responding. The you know the other Madison, Alicia, and Nick get back from the neighbor. They run in with the shotgun. You know, and they're pointing the shotgun at him, and they don't want to pull the trigger. You know, I think Travis is telling you know to stop. Don't do it. And who does the one thing that they can't do? The barber shop owner. He grabs the shotgun and takes a shot at the neighbor, blasting his face off, basically. I mean, it wasn't his head. His head didn't blow off. It was his face. And seeing that, that moment, you know, where the face came off, you see all the, the gore and all that, the blood coming out, everybody's freaking out, you know, I thought was really cool. Because um, you see firsthand, he's not stopping. He didn't fall to the floor. He's still walking. And then, you know, he takes one or two steps forward, puts the barrel right at its head, and pulls the trigger, and boom, there, you have the head explode everywhere. Um, and everybody's freaking out. The younger son, Chris especially, he, like, is on the verge of throwing up, and he runs out of the house, I believe. It was that moment right there that the barbershop owner doesn't know these people, you know, but he recognized the urgency of the situation and that if blowing this guy's face off wasn't going to stop him he had to do something else and then the daughter goes back to the other house where they got the shotgun from to get more shotgun shells that she dropped and she almost gets attacked by the dead neighbor in there so now that neighbor is dead too so it just it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger this episode was a perfect example of of stuff growing it's getting worse you know there was something about the barber though the barbershop owner that I feel like he is almost like maybe he could be like ex-military, you know, at some point or something like that. He has this like feel to to him that he just acts rather than, you know, reacts to something. You know, there's a part after everything calms down, um, you know, they put the, the barbershop owner's family in, uh, in another room and they're there resting. The daughter is, is pretty much telling them, you know, we can stay here. The dad's like the you know the barbershop owner dad or her dad is saying you know no we have to go you know we got to leave we got to get out of here. Uh, we'll you know take off tomorrow and da da da. Well, <laughs> the, the daughter is speaking. They're speaking in Spanish. Which it has subtitles at the bottom. Um, and you know being Hispanic, I, I I'm not the greatest at speaking Spanish. I I can do okay, but you can understand when somebody is speaking really bad Spanish and she was speaking horrible Spanish. She had the worst accent, um, you know, to it was almost like, um, say just anybody else trying to speak Spanish. That's what it sounded like to me. And then, um, the funniest part happened. The, you know, her dad looks over to the mom and tells her, and tells her, you know, this is this is what happens whenever you don't teach somebody real Spanish <laughs> or Spanish properly. I thought that was hilarious that they addressed it. I thought that they were just going to leave it at, at that. Um, at, at least they made a mention that she was speaking bad Spanish. <laughs> the next day, the barbershop owner is actually teaching the younger son, Chris, how to use the, sh the shotgun. You know, how to, how to use it, how to load it. And then he makes the, this, he gives this little small explanation that I thought was really interesting. Um, and I thought it was, it was, again, a small detail that I appreciated that they threw in there. Um, he was telling the kid about the different shotgun shells. One of them was a bird shot and the other one was a double op buck. Um, and pretty much giving the clue that, okay, the shell that they used to shoot the the neighbor didn't blow off his head immediately well and then he was talking about the barrels too um, that you know um, that the shell that they were using you know previously to shoot the neighbor didn't blow off his head that way because it was most likely I guess you know clues they, they, they didn't say it directly but context clues was saying that it was a, it was a bird shot you know uh, so that's just gonna you know injure or hurt uh, you know uh, like they like it did you know pull the face off of, of uh, the infected all of a sudden the military comes in starts to round everybody up question everybody take everybody's names um and to me you know that's kind of where the paranoia 
starts to, to set in even further. Um, but to them, it's, it's something different. They, they're thinking that they're saved. Even the boyfriend, Travis, you know, looks at Madison and says, the cavalry's here. You know, it's going to be better now. We know it's not. <laughs> but seeing him trying to have that little ounce of hope, you know, it's it's terrible because you know what's going to happen. You know, you know how it, this all plays out in the end. The barbershop owner's upstairs with his wife in another room, and he's seeing the troops, you know, going up and down the streets, and they're spray painting the houses, like with an X and some wording across them. And, you know, she's asking him what's going on. And the last line, this is the last line of the episode, he pretty much says, it's too late now. This was another great episode. Um, if you haven't gotten into it so far, I would suggest maybe waiting a couple more episodes. Um, you know, I think there's like three more going on, but I would say wait a couple more, uh, maybe to the very end almost, and then just like binge watch all of them through. So that way you get the full story, you know, one right after another. It's only six episodes, so that's not too bad. I can't wait till the next one, and I will be back to uh, review that one with you guys.